my needle drops. Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Gore Guts album, Colored Sands. Space, 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 space. These guys are a Quebec death metal outfit whose discography spans back to the late 80s. In the beginning, the band used to make death metal that was a little standard for the genre, but increasingly they got more and more technical and experimental until the band put out Obscura in 1998, which for a lot of Gorguts fans is, is really a peak for the band with riffs and song structures that were incredibly dense, dizzying, brutal, intense. The band stuck with roughly the same sound and direction for their next full-length LP and ended up calling it quits for a little bit after the unfortunate suicide of their drummer. Frontman Luke LeMay went on to concentrate on other creative endeavors, including Negativa. But now, the band has come back and has returned with two surprising additions from the newer world of underground metal, Colin Marston and Kevin Huffnagel, who you may remember from bands such as Dysrhythmia, but I have reviewed much more Colin stuff on this channel, like his work in Kralis or Behold the Arctopus, and of course he's done production for numerous metal bands out there, including Liturgy. Colin and Kevin are incredibly talented, perceptive, and technical, but there are a lot of listeners in this older world of metal that haven't exactly openly embraced them. Even though it is pretty obvious that bands like Gore Guts influence the things that they do in groups such as Dysrhythmia to a high degree. But now, it seems like the tables have turned and Colin and Kevin are influencing the Gore Guts sound on this record, or at least the modern metal landscape is. Now, there kind of seems to be this element of atmospheric sludge metal coming into the mix, slowing things down a bit, making things a little more paced heavy, ethereal. I would actually liken some of what's on this record to a band like Ulcery, a group that is known for being incredibly, incredibly dizzying with how busy their songs are and just how intense the technicality of the instrumentation is. But, but above all of this mayhem and just fast-moving brutality, there is this cloud of darkness that just encapsulates all of it. And now Gorguts as well sounds brutally complicated but monstrous in size on Colored Sands. As far as the sound of this record goes, I'm in love with it. I think it's fantastic. The drums, whew, they're tight. Stellar execution on these things. They have a lot of punch, but there is that kind of flatness that a lot of modern death metal drummers shoot for. However, I don't mind it. The playing, the performance on this record feels so human. It feels so fluid. It doesn't feel overly robotic or just too rigid to feel exciting. I love the rolling double bass drum kicks on this thing, and the cymbals add a nice metallic splash in the background on here too. Colin Marston's bass on this thing, a ton of treble. Not a lot of low end frequency coming through on this thing, which isn't really a terrible thing. Usually I like my bass to be a bit rounder, a bit warmer, but it really makes his playing stick out among all the mayhem going on with the drums, the guitars, and the vocals. And you kind of want to hear what he's doing, especially considering some of the lines that he's playing, how interesting they are, the nice counterpoint they bring, some of the intervals he's playing. It adds to Colored Sands in two ways. It makes it more complicated musically and brings it a little more abrasion. Luke's vocals sound stellar. I think he's proven that he still has it in a big way on this LP. He still brings immense amounts of intensity and fire with his just guttural throaty growls. The rhythm guitars to me are all right. They don't really stick out in terms of uh, an amazing tone or a unique tone in my opinion. There are spots where that more atmospheric sludge metal vibe comes through, brings a bit of heaviness. It sounds good, but to me it's really the solo and, and the lead guitars that kind of make this record so colorful and so interesting. They're just so bright and sharp and ear piercing. However, they can be kind of quiet, toned down, and tender when they need to be as well. And there are moments where they need to be because Gorguts work out quite a few dynamic moments on this thing, like the song Ocean of Wisdom, which has this very sad, mournful guitar interlude right around the middle of it, which sees Gorguts kind of moving toward a more coherent side, a more easily digestible side as far as musical composition. I think Gorguts still writes some really intense and technical songs. What I think is going on is that they're kind of making this huge ethereal musical backdrop for all of it so that it all ties together a little bit more. There are other spots on here where I'm finding Gorguts to be very enjoyable, but also uh, 
surprisingly coherent, like the title track on here, or the song Another Face, which starts off with these very slow, depressing arpeggios, heavy droning chords that soon build into these intense and dissonant grooves and riffs that, yeah, are kind of weird and are off kilter, but the band plays them out so fluidly that it's easy to just have a really quick physical response to it. It's cerebral and it's visceral. And I still think that Gorguts brings some very noisy and technical surprises on this LP, like the opening track, the guitar layering at the beginning of this song is just so difficult to grab onto and make sense of. And the guitar solo at the end of the song, Ember's Voice, maybe one of my favorite solos on this album, is really melodic, but is harmonized with another guitar to be very sinister and twisted. There's also a pretty impressive string piece that pops in into the middle of this album that is really tense, it's dramatic, I'm loving it. Actually, the band saves the most crushing blow on this album for the last track, which I love. With riffs, drums, and vocals, it feels like the band is just throwing everything that they have into this single track, making it just, oh, a beating beyond <laughs> measure. While still kind of maintaining that technical composure that we come to expect from their songs. What I think Colored Sands kind of comes down to is that for Gorguts, this record is very melodic, but it's still dark, it's sickening, it's just brutal. I feel like a lot of death metal bands kind of forego and neglect melody a little bit for the sake of being more brutal, for the sake of being noisier, and I feel like what Gorguts has essentially stepped forward and done is proven that you can embrace melody in a big way but still make a record that is just evil as hell. I do kind of have an issue with this album being a little too dense at times, and I feel like as long as Gorguts was going to step out, be a little more melodic, experiment with some of this string work, why not even take two, three, four, five steps further into the experimental abyss, just totally do something whacked out. However, maybe that's just me kind of demanding more because I'm incredibly excited by the talent in the writing, the production, and the performance on this record. It's just all so good from front to back. I wish it ventured outside of its comfort zone a little bit more, but Gorguts have pulled together an incredibly solid record on this one. I'm feeling a strong A2 a light 9 on Colored Sands. But if you've given this LP a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that is about it. Only the Strong subscribe. All mistakes were intentional. Anthony Fantano. Gorguts. Colored Sands. Forever.